First tonight, we focus on two conditions that can affect your vision. Joining us in the studio for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Osama Saidi, an assistant professor of ophthalmology and visual sciences at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, practicing ophthalmologist at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. We're excited to talk about cataracts and glaucoma. And I was thinking about my, my last um, visit to an eye doctor just for a prescription yeah. update. And they do that little puff test, yeah. which is not to check for your blinking ability, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start there because people are familiar yeah. with it. What are you actually looking for? So great question. So when you do the puff test, you're checking for pressure in the eye. And it is one of the ways to screen for whether pressure is very high or very low. It's not the most accurate way of doing it, but you'll frequently see that uh, when you go to the optometrists or in other settings like that. Uh, and so pressure is very important, especially when it has to do with glaucoma, one of the diseases that we're talking about today. So glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve. It has to do with degeneration or deterioration of the optic nerve. It's an age-related disease, and it is one of the leading causes of blindness. Uh, worldwide, and it causes the leading cause of irreversible blindness as well. And so it's estimated about 3 million people in the U.S., uh, or close to 3 million people, have glaucoma, and it is more and more common as you get older. So it's about 2 or 3% prevalence overall, but as in the age group over 80, it's up to 8 or 9% as well. The, the ophthalmologist mm -hmm. version of the puff test is the thing with the blue light? Exactly correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like, sounds like you've been there, too. Yeah. Right, right, right. So we numb the eye, and we... Uh, uh, use some blue light, and then a small probe will get very close to the eye to check the pressure. And that's as accurate as we can get currently. You know, when you say close to the eye, I thought it actually like, touched. It gets, yeah, it actually, you can actually feel it. Absolutely. It gets on the, right on the tear film, and you can feel it. What, what's the relative accuracy of those two tests? I would say that the puff is a good way to screen. It'll get you in the ballpark. And that the uh, Goldman applination tonometer, which is the blue light, um, is... Uh, again, as accurate as we can get to knowing what the pressure is in the eye currently. And, and how um, accurate is that in picking up glaucoma at a stage where you can do something about it? Right, so that's, that's a great question. Uh, so we know that about a third of patients have glaucoma at normal pressures. And that was done with some great work was done here with the Baltimore Eye Disease Survey. And so um, in terms of picking up glaucoma, just screening for glaucoma, checking the eye pressure itself isn't really enough. So especially if you're at high risk for glaucoma, particularly if you have a family history of glaucoma, you really need a full eye exam. If somebody has to dilate the eye, and if there is some suspicion for glaucoma, they should te formally test your visual field. And so in glaucoma, the, the deterioration or the damage to the optic nerve can cause loss of peripheral field, and we can test that formally with a special test. Okay, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's talk about cataracts for a second, because yes. you helpfully brought a <laughs> giant plastic eyeball <laughs> With you, which gets us into the, the cataract uh, discussion, and, and everybody, there's a lens in there. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is the eye, and uh, so the rays of light, as you can see, can come in the front of the eye, the cornea, and they get focused by both the cornea and the lens to the retina, the back of the eye, to the photoreceptors there. And so the cataract is basically your native lens over here that has become opacified. And that's a normal cloudy process. Cloudy is the non scientific Cloudy, yeah. exactly correct. It gets cloudy. And so... Um, it is a normal age-related process, and so we say that above the age of 40, most people have a cataract, but that's not something that you're going to have to worry about. By and large, that's something that doesn't affect vision, but over age, that can become cloudier and cloudier to where it's something that causes blurriness. People will often complain of uh, ha uh, halos and glare at night uh, when they're driving. That's sort of sometimes an early symptom of it, and um, you know, at that point, the therapy for it is basically surgery. And cataract surgery is very successful, and uh, most people who have cataract surgery are very happy with it. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about conditions of the eye, you can give us a call. We'll have the num number up on the screen. You could also tweet a question. Our Twitter address is at MPT News. And uh, somebody I know who had cataract surgery actually thought it was an upgrade after the process was over because he no longer needed eyeglasses for, for distance, it was somehow built into the replacement lens. Absolutely. So before somebody gets cataract surgery, we do very careful measurements. We measure the length of the eye, the curvature of the eye, and the lens that, so when we do cataract surgery, we take out the lens, 
you see we take this lens out. And it's and just then, that easy. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then through a very tiny incision, a approximately two to three millimeter incision, we uh, can, uh, what we say, emulsify and aspirate. We basically suck out the lens and we put in a plastic lens. And that plastic lens is fit right to your eye. So then you may have needed, you know, thicker glasses, but once we put that lens in, you, for distance at least, will not need glasses. How, how do we prevent needing this? Is everybody over time, it's just going to happen? Yeah, so I mean, there's some great research going on, but, uh, you know, currently uh, cataract is not something that we really know how to prevent, you know. I mean, there is, uh, it is an age-related process. There are certain things that are more, uh, put you more at risk for cataract, diabetes, steroids, uh, steroid use for medical, re whatever medical reason, and uh, trauma as well. But, um, you know, currently there's no actual preventative uh, medication or therapy. A uh, bunch of phone calls for you. Let's talk to Leroy in Baltimore City. Leroy, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, there are different pressures in glaucoma. There's a different pressure from person to person. How do you determine what pressure is suitable for a particular case of glaucoma? Great, great question. Thank you, sir. So this is a this is a this clearly is a very sophisticated viewer, and so um, you know when we talk about pressure in glaucoma, we really you know normal pressure is about twelve to twenty one, about you know ninety five percent of people live within that range, uh, but. You know, for somebody who has glaucoma, we want a very low pressure because we don't want their disease to progress. The way we treat glaucoma is by lowering the pressure in the eye. And so if somebody had very advanced glaucoma, I would want a very low pressure. And so if somebody had, you know, very mild glaucoma, it wouldn't necessarily be as low. And we talk about reducing the pressure about 30%. So it's not an absolute number. It's more of a relative number. Uh, let's go to Anne Arundel County. This is May. May, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Fine, thank you. My husband is blind by both of us all, well, seven years ago. Could you tell me what could be done for him to at least regain one of his sight? Well, it's hard for me to, to know uh, what exactly is the reason for your husband's loss of vision. But May, if you're still there, was it glaucoma related or something else? Uh, Howard, could you answer that question, please, Howard? Yeah, glaucoma and diabetes. Okay. Thanks. Good luck. We'll get you an answer on the air. Okay. But I thought I heard diabetes and glaucoma. So, you know, it's hard to know from what the, what the caller said. Um, you know, glaucoma, unfortunately, when vision is lost due to glaucoma, it is generally irreversible. So it's an irreversible cause of blindness. Uh, other causes are reversible. So cataract, we said there's a surgery for cataract. It is a reversible cause of blindness. Uh, some retinal diseases, there are, uh, you know, injections and things that we can do to improve vision. Uh, so it, it varies from person to person. Uh, but glaucoma generally is an irreversible so after after May's phone call and, and, and hearing, you know, what can go wrong, a lot of viewers are going to head to the eye doctor, <laughs> as, as they ought to, to, to get checked out. Um, but to what degree is it hereditary or, I mean, do you know how much... You need to worry at what age. Absolutely. So it is an age-related condition. The American Academy of Ophthalmology says all people above the age of 60 should get a screening eye exam every you know, couple of years. Um, if you have a family history, you certainly should get a complete eye exam. And in some cases, you should get a, a formal visual field, depending on your family history. If your mother, uh, father, brother, sister had glaucoma, you really should get it checked out. If they had it early, you should have an early screening eye exam. Um, and certainly, if you're having symptoms, you should get checked out. So, you know, glaucoma is not something people have symptoms uh, with. So, really, it's something that's only ever picked up when you actually look carefully at the eye and try to diagnose. Um, yeah, that the makes disease. it makes it scary. I mean, the cataract thing, you you know, if things are getting fuzzy, you have the halo, and and it's treatable. Yeah, I think that as long as people are getting regular eye exams, um, I think that, uh, you know, and getting appropriate uh, eye care, I think that they will be appropriately screened. But certainly if you have a family history or you're in a higher risk group, you should be screened uh, earlier. Let's talk mm -hmm. to Anita in Prince George's County. Anita, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I have Stevens-Johnson syndrome, um, but I do also have been diagnosed with a cataract. And I'm having the halo and the cloud and sometimes... I'm legally blind. The vision disappears, and I'm wondering at what point should I push, try and push my doctor to do something about it. So you should, uh, you know, I'm sure your doctor is taking good care of you, and uh, you should, uh, you know, sort of listen to um, his or her advice. Uh, obviously, you have a couple of conditions in the eye, so it's hard for me to say. Um, 
you know, those are decisions that are made by the, somebody who would be doing surgery or who somebody does, who well, Let me jump in there. Who, who does the surgery? Is it any ophthalmologist? Yeah. So, um, you know, general ophthalmologists, their bread and butter is cataract surgery. Um, but, uh, you know, most ophthalmologists, they can be a general ophthalmologists, cornea specialists, glaucoma specialists, uh, can do do the surgery. Absolutely. Uh, Anne Arundel County, this is David. David, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Uh, you said uh, after the cataract surgery, I don't need a glass for distance. But uh, what happens to me is uh, without the glass, I can only see the distance of my hand. For any distance, I have to wear glass. Is there anything, anything goes wrong David. the surgery? Th- thank you. We'll get you an answer on the air. So it sounds like just what we talked about, the, the new lens is, sees like an eagle at, at a distance, but the, the near field went, went fuzzier. So I, sh- I should uh, actually clarify my point before. You know, we, we aim to reduce the dependence on glasses, and, ev- and many, many people will see without glasses, but uh, many people will need a small correction to see perfect in distance. Now, if we set the vision perfectly for distance, then typically you will still need to use reading glasses. Some, there are different strategies to deal with that. There's what we call monovision, one eye for distance, one eye for near. Um, there, is, uh, there are new multifocal lenses, which are kind of like bifocals in the eye. So, um, you know, those are some things to talk to your doctor about before you get your cataract surgery. Yeah, I think I understand that because with these glasses on, I can see distance great. But if I look through it, it's all fuzzy. Right. right. And it would be like having that permanently. Exactly. If you have yeah. the, standard, uh, the standard distance lens. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Wicomico County. This is Linda. Linda, thank you for calling. Go ahead. I just... Um to go to your uh, the, the, your comment about the multifocal lenses, I'm getting ready to have cataract surgery, and I was going to go for the upgrade on the multifocal lenses, and I wondered how you felt about those. I think that some of the multifocal lenses are great. I think that um, they are, you know, so those are lenses that uh, you can ask your ophthalmologist about, and they are usually a small premium over the regular lens, uh, you know, Basically, the ophthalmologist needs to determine whether you're a good candidate for it. And if you are, some people are very, very satisfied with them. There are some people who are, are not as satisfied, but the key is picking out the right candidate as best as you can. Before we go, you're, you're director of clinical research yes. for ophthalmology at, at Maryland as well. What, what are the frontiers here? What are you working on? Yeah, so some of the stuff we're working on is determining why people get glaucoma. Certainly we know that pressure is very important, but we're also looking at blood flow in the back of the eye. And people with glaucoma, uh, it is thought, have poor blood flow and poor regulation of blood flow. So we're doing some uh, sophisticated imaging of the back of the eye um, to determine why people get glaucoma as a diagnostic test. Very good. Dr. Osama Saidi of the University of Maryland, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.